Elf Creek Games has a title. I saw it. I think I like it. And I want to tell you about it. Merchants of the Dark Road. This is for one to four players, ages 12 and up, and should take you between one and two hours to play. After half a year of daylight, we must now prepare for the dark season. The roads will be treacherous, but they will still need to be braved by a select few in order to keep our cities thriving. In Merchants of the Dark Road, you are one of these brave few merchants that travel the dangerous paths between cities. While the job is perilous, fame and fortune await. Discover the capital city where most of your action will take place and use a rondel action system. Collect and produce items to add to your caravan or sell these items to local heroes and hire them to travel with you. Manipulate the market price for items, visit the back alley sellers or deliver a nearby dungeon for magical items to gain the potential for even more coin and notoriety. Gather lanterns to ease your passage along the dark road as you guide your caravan to distant villages. Deliver goods and heroes to the best destinations and gain fame for your bravery. Balance the money that you earn with the height of your fame because your final score after the number of the game rounds will reflect the lowest of these two values. After all, what good is purse full of coin if the people don't sing songs about you? And what good is a song with an empty mug of ale? Uh, that, that sounds pleasant. <laughs> it, it does. So, Merchants of the Dark Road. I also like the company name Elf Creek Games. That's pretty cool. <laughs> but that has nothing to do with the game itself, now does it? So, it, it does claim to be uh, a captivating adventure that is going to take you, your players, uh, and you're going to immerse you into this really rich fantasy world is what they're, is that they're claiming. And that there's a lot of storytelling to be had here. I like games of storytelling, and that's what I'm seeing, that's what I'm hearing about this, is that there is that option uh, for storytelling along with strategic decision-making while you're going across the, the, the course of the game. Uh, and I think a lot of that probably has to do with, you know, what you're spending your money on, which routes that you're taking. Uh, from from an outsider guess, I think that's, that's what they're talking about. And that's good, that's interesting, because that is the case, and that gives it a little bit of a sandboxy feel as far as victory uh, conditions go. And I am a huge fan uh, of that in a system. Uh, but i got to see and, uh, and wait. Uh, and I don't have the game, I'm just talking about things that I've heard, read, seen, uh, been told about this. Now, something else, maybe this is just a subtle reason, but something else that, that definitely got me thinking about this game is that I have tons of games, fantasy games, where you're playing warriors and wizards and rogues and clerics and orcs and drow and, you know, dwarves and anything else. But a merchant? I don't think I have any merchant games. Uh, well, I mean, I have a tavern, I have a couple of tavern games, but this is different. This is an active player that's a merchant. I like that. That's different. That's new. It's very interesting. So as a mechanic of play, it does talk about the use of a rondelle. Now, I, I have very limited experience with this game mechanic, which is partly another reason that I'm thinking about this game, because I have a very limited uh, experience with rondelles, the use of them in board games, that this would be something else that I can test, I can try out. Uh, I don't even really have much of an opinion on rondelles, uh, because I've only I've only used them a few times. Uh, I kind of think I like them, but I'm not sold yet. So maybe another game with that as a mechanic uh, could could sway me one way or the other. Now apparently, and I, I like this, uh, one of the ways to succeed in this game is, is you got to remember, you got to keep in mind that ultimately this seems to be a resource management style game. Uh, so you have to plan appropriately as you're playing the game because of this. Uh, although you have paths to take, you have deals to make, it, you, you need to manage your resources. In this case, particularly your money, as well as your fame. You want the bards and minstrels to be telling the people you're the song of your life and story. Because you're epic, aren't you? <laughs> now here I find another example of the importance of art in a board game. Because the art is amazing to look at. You want to throw this down on the table just to see the artwork. Uh, it's going to draw your attention. And a great artwork in a game, ultimately, I think, means the game is going to be played more. 
And if you stream your games, <laughs> that just means that, you know, everyone's going to see how much you enjoy the game and how much the art affects you, and you're going to be streaming a lot more of it, I guess. But as long as it gets played, streamed or otherwise, that's the purpose of games, is to get played. I, I think overall, this just seems to be, uh, you know, with the resource management, uh, storytelling strategy, light on the storytelling part, uh, and basic player interaction between each other uh, is, is what's going to drive a lot of the interest in this game. That's what I, I think, anyway, from what I've read and seen. You know, and it, it's a fantasy game, so that's a plus. I mean, they're the number one selling board games, I think, I'm pretty sure. At least judging by the number of them that get bumped out every year. Uh, so, yeah, a fantasy, family fun uh, game with, re with a lot of replayability. Uh, you know, because you have a lot of different paths to choose from uh, during the course of the game. I think this all comes together to say, you know, hey, you want to try something different than just being a murder hobo? Why don't you try being a merchant? See how tough it is being a merchant in a fantasy world. I mean, serious. <laughs> anyway, don't, don't listen to influencers, my friends. Please, listen to informers. Get information about stuff and then make your own damn decisions. And the best way, I think, to do that when it comes to something like a game is don't listen to reviewers. Watch playthroughs. Go find playthroughs of the game. That's the best way for you to discover if you think it's something that you and, and your gaming gang are going to enjoy. And while you're at it, why don't you go get yourself some information on Merchants of the Dark Road.